Hi guys, I'm back again today with another reaction video. And today we are reacting to Ross Capiccioni. I don't even know how to pronounce his name and his amazing story. Well, guys, let's get into this. It's a long video, so. Alright, my name is Ross Capiccioni. Capiccioni, Michigan, suburb okay, outside sorry. Detroit. For butchering your name. How it happened? Well, it, all, it happened like I was a junior in high school, you know, 17-year-old punk shit. Just doing my thing, skating, hanging out. What I mean is basically there's no this kid, supposedly was mostly my friend, and I knew this kid for uh, 10 years prior before this day. He asked me, hey, can you give me a ride to my cousin's house, you know, down in the D? All right, yeah, well, like, what part? Like, the west side or the east side? And he's like, the east side. And I was like, nah, man, I don't got no business on the east side, you know? He's like, no, nah, it's cool, man. Like the east side, that's like seven mile, like it's just, it's like a third world country. So the police, mile. they won't stop and get out the car. They won't pull you over. If there's gunshots, oh, they'll yeah. wait till everything's clear and they'll come pick your body up off the street and that's it. He's like, please, man, please. I'm like, no. So like a week goes by, you know, I'm still telling him no, like, cause I had a feeling like, don't go down there. Kept asking me, I'll give you 30 bucks for gas, all this shit. I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, you're my friend. I'll take you down there. Why? I go to school that day, and I get out, and everything seems normal. We go to the gas station, he gives me the money for gas. We drive down there. So I get off, and it's just like, I get that eerie feeling like you're in the bad spot. You and it's like broad daylight out, beautiful feeling. day like the, today. Instinct. And we're driving, and he's telling me where to go, and we pull out in the street, and you know, there's people outside, and he's like, all right, that's the house right there. So he's like, you know, pull around back in the back. Is like when I the turned the corner the to go song? right, like I seen it, it was like cautioned that, by do not enter and all this shit, but I still, you know, because I, I knew him for so long, I just thought, you know, it's the D, it's, you know, whatever. There was a fence, like a grass area, my, my vehicle, and then houses right there. So it was like, nah, I wasn't in the middle of nowhere or anything. And like I get out and he gets out and like, it's only a couple seconds, I'm looking around. And, my ears are ringing, I'm like, Man, that was close. And I kind of just glanced down and my arm's just hanging off. Just hanging oh off like a God. zombie. And I'm just looking at it and I'm like, yeah, this is, you know, yeah, it's not real. And I kind of shake it off and look again and it's just hanging off my arm. Oh. And I'm like, okay, then it kicks in like blood, like flowing, like, like an animal. And then I look up and this kid's just holding a shotgun, like 10 feet away from me, just holding it right at me. And I asked him, I said, like, did you shoot me? And he just... Oh shit, and he's alive? Blew a hole in my chest like this big. So after that, I just dropped to my knees. I lost all my air, I couldn't see. I remember like being on my, like, you know, on my hands and knees. How is and this still I felt the alive? barrel of the gun on my head. I felt this barrel just shaking stuff on my head. And so I smacked it away. But there was a shotgun, so it sprayed. No, how is so this So it still, still like alive? hit me in the head really good, but it didn't blow my head off like a watermelon just to pieces. So after that, I got a little sight and I was like, okay, I'm still moving. Like, I don't know what's going on with my head, but I know I'm alive. And I remember I looked up and he was just staring at me and he took the butt of the gun and like smashed me in the face with it. Knocks my teeth out. Like I fall back, but I can still see at this point. And I don't understand like how I can see because I have so much damage to like my lung and heart. I felt like these hands like in my pocket digging for my car keys. Like, when he's trying to grab my keys, like I ended up on my stomach. And I look up and I see my Jeep commander driving away. He's driving away, flying away. And I said, okay, well, either I stay laid down in this spot so this right here and die. this is the that he made? Or I try to get up. So I try to push myself up, but like take my left arm. Because I was right out, wondering so. in the rap song if Gunshot he to the survived chest bigger than a or soup bowl, he died. And then my but head all he died because... mashed up. And I'm trying to push myself off the ground. I kept trying and trying and I'm like, all right, you know what? One more. I'm going to try it one more time. And I pushed up and then I, I don't know where I felt these arms from underneath me pick me up. And I remember oh. like swinging, trying to grab someone and there was no one around. And I was just like standing up still like a, like, you know, like a drunk, like, you know, zombie, just like, and I got this, like, like a shove, like someone shoved me from behind to go forward. I must have got about seven, eight feet. And I just fell straight down. Because I remember I hit the ground, like on my stomach. I'm like, all right, well, I went as far as I could. This shit's hurting, like, 
too much. Like, let me just close my eyes and start relaxing. It. I wish to find out I closed my eyes and this. all the pain started going away. And then I'd wake up real fast and be like, this is not right. I just got shot 30 seconds ago. How's the pain stopping? And I'd be like, yeah, don't worry about it. You know, go back to sleep. That's a good feeling when you're sleeping. So I'd pass back out a little bit and then I'd be, I'd be like dying. And then I'd wake myself up, like my own voice, third person. And, hey man, get up, man, you're dying. And then like, I did that and then I heard, hey, hey. And I like started hearing this guy and he's like running over to me. So when I fell, there was a, like a probation officer at a stoplight and he seen me fall out of the woods, like all bloody broad daylight. And then I felt his hand on my back, like, hey man, you're fine, don't, don't, don't close your eyes. You know, come on, the ambulance is coming, they're coming. And I'm like, man, like, I just want to sleep, leave me alone, man. But then in my head, I'm like, no, you don't, because if you fall asleep, you're sleeping forever. And I remember like getting on the stretcher and they're putting me in the stretcher and just, like the, the facial expression of the paramedic was just like, just a stunned look on his face, but I would be in the too. same time telling me I looked great. I looked beautiful, like you're gonna be fine. And then it just like blacked out and I went to like a, like I was outside of the ambulance on my skateboard, filming it, like rolling telephoto filming oh, of the ambulance. I'm getting the doors open, everyone's panicking. And oh I see my, my legs God. coming out. And like once it gets to my head, blacked out. I was pronounced dead on arrival right there. John Doe had nothing on me. They said, you know, doc, this, this kid's, you know, gone. And doc said, no. Ah, I, you know, I'm here, let me try, let me try. We don't need more of this, because I'm so confused. Like when I was pronounced dead on arrival, okay. like throw him in the body bag, he's dead. Like The doctor said, no, like, you know, I'm going to try to help him. This man doesn't know who I am. He could have said, yeah, he's dead, all right, I'm going back home. He said, no, like I feel something, I, I'm going to try. Did the heart surgery, gave me 24 hours to you know, see if I was still breathing on the ventilator. After 24 hours, I was still alive. They fixed my arm and my head, and I woke up three days later. I remember like waking up, and it was still all white, like white everywhere, and I'm like, dead, dead. I'm 17, I'm dead. And then it starts to like come in, and it's like I see curtains, like a, like a freaking oxygen tank, and I'm like, <coughs> Like starting, then out of nowhere, bam, perfect vision again, I'm in a hospital. And I'm, then I'm like tied down to the bed because I got the breathing tube in me. Mm -hmm. I got this thing pumping air into my lungs, so I start freaking out. But there was a nurse there the whole time though, I didn't even notice her because I was all tied down and I just hear screaming like, he's awake, he's awake. And I see her like running out of the room and then like running back like three more nurses and the doctor, just this woman just coming around the corner flying, like throws her clipboard in the air, runs up to me, oh my God, you look beautiful. Like, and in my head, I'm like, what do you mean? I look beautiful, I can't even, what's, what's going on? Like, am I tied down? And then she's like, all right, one, two, and like on two, she pulled that thing out of my throat, man. I got like, I got to breathe again, like real air, like, you know, of course I coughed up a ball oh of tar and BBs, but everyone was just looking at me like, you're you're alive like you're you're breathing on your own right now like what's your name i don't know this is a miracle what, year is it? what? who's the president huh mm -hmm. is there any way we could contact anyone you know with a phone number i was like two seven out of anything my name anything the year only thing i remembered after that was my father's phone number for three days my family didn't number? know my father Whoa. was outside like spraying out the garage and he got the phone call from the hospital saying I think we got your son he's been shot but he's alive. So did you look for him for three days? So, I don't know how my parents had it. I don't know how that feels like you're a father. Like, so, I don't know. It chokes me up because like mm -hmm. it's crazy but they came down there and I remember like I see my mom come in and my dad and I'm looking at him I was like mom you can't get mad at me right now. She's like mad you're alive you're alive. After like the fourth day, they were like, all right, get up, you know, start walking, like, let's go. I'm like, let's go where? He's like, you're going home tomorrow. I'm like, it's been five days. He's like, dude, you're going home. What do you want to live in a hospital? You want to go live your life again? I'm like, sir, I got a hole in my chest the size of a teacup. He's like, listen, Ross, I gave you a tip of advice. You live through this, you're going to be okay. Just go home, live your life. Don't hang out with these kids anymore. After five days, they sent me home. 
So like, I, I'm shy, you know? My parents are asking me questions. My dad's asking, what are we gonna do about it? And I'm like telling him, like, Dad, I know who did it, you know? The next day, like, phone, out of a movie, like, these men in suits came in. And my dad's like, yeah, can I help you? And they pull out their, you know, badges and FBI, you know? They say the kid's name. And I'm like, yeah, I know him, that's who shot me. He's like, oh, could you identify him through a picture? I was like, of course. Pull out a picture of the kid. I said, that's him right there. He said, Ross, we have him in custody. I said, how? I just woke up like two days ago. I just learned how my name again, like how to talk. He's like, the day blank shot you, he called blank and told him. So this kid shoots me and calls his buddy and says, hey, I shot Ross, he's dead. The kid's like, no, you didn't, you're lying. Because imagine another 15-year-old kid saying to a 15-year-old kid, you know? So after they hang up, the kid he told calls the police on him. And he was met by the SWAT team right at his front yard. Got him. And like, all I had to do wow. was go to court Karma. and testify against him. I went in there, man, in a wheelchair, head still stapled, no teeth. 105 pounds because of all the blood I lost, arm cast, and I sat in front of 40 of his family and him, and he couldn't look me in the eye. He had his head down the whole time, and I had to tell my story like this to everyone. That was the what first one. I had to go back to final sentencing, and that's when I was healed. Like So I, I walked back in the courtroom the second time. He comes out in a purple suit, top hat, cane, and sunglasses. This is the kid who shot me at court, smiling. While his family cheers him on, says, like, way to shoot Ross, called me a coward because I, I was taking the justice route. Like, I didn't lower myself to his standards and go try to kill him. I spoke and the judge, like, looked of at this kid and said, Of course you take the justice said, you know, route because he's gonna said, go around and shoot everyone. Yo, Ross, thank you. And the kid just looked at the judge like, what do you mean? He's like, because if you would have killed Ross that day, you would have got life in prison. But since Ross was a warrior and survived, you get a second chance and you just slam the gavel on him. So I go have fun in prison for 35 years. Well, I found out that the cause of the shooting was because he had a joint oh, gang. Should have given him life his, even. His initiation was kill a random person. Oh, oh yeah, so it was he the had rap. to pick someone, so he just thought I would be the guy to pick. Yeah, that happened in 2007. Oh, I just hope like about nothing four years. ever happens like this ever I'm to anybody. The first anybody two again. were the hardest. It's it gets just... hard, like, like waking up and knowing like someone tried to like shoot you down. You got to get through that every day. Like seeing people. Like, I, I get on a bus, public Scary. bus, I'm freaking you just out the not, whole time. Never like, trust, I don't trust anyone. I'm the bus. For a while, my mother had to like take care of me as like like how you do an infant, like exactly. washing, changing, feeding. Like, I'm 17 years old and I got my mom bathing me. I can't move, I got no hand, I can't talk. I'm all sweet. And my, you know, my dad and mom were like, Ross, like, come on, like the doctors say, like, give it time. And then all my friends are like, coming to see me, hanging out with me. I started getting more positive. One day I woke up and I just, I felt different. Like, I was like, you know what, this is, this is my world. That's what I, like, every time in physical therapy, like, I would, try to do something, mess up, I'd be like, well, it's like a nolly backside flip. Like, you're gonna mess up and, until you try it and land it. When I'd mess up, I'd be like, nolly backside flip, and then I'd, I'd get it. Like, I'd do something with my hand and like put the thing in, and the doctor would be like, oh yeah, good job, like you did it. And I'd be like, hmm. So I like started living my life as like skateboarding. I it's really enjoy working. this. I'm very blessed. I like, mean, not the like, like, yeah, I just like, like watching. I see it now. Like when before, I'm like, you know, well, you know like, I'm so unlucky. Like, I, I went and stuff through like all that. this sh getting shot, and really, like I look at it now after like maturing and growing up, like it just gave me a, like a whole new leg up on life and how I can live my life. And it's crazy. Like it's, amazing. it's like makes me happy to be alive, and it's like so grateful for everything. Like I just look at what I got. I don't look at what I don't have. I look at what I have. I want to watch the rap video again, just because, wow, wow, I really, um, that was really interesting, I really liked that, because I got to, I found out the, you know, what happened after the, you know, the rap 
song that I reacted to because I was thinking, is he dead? Is he alive? And blah blah blah. So I was thinking he was dead, but then, oh, I'm so relieved that he's alive and the guy is in jail, you know. Finding out those things are great if the person you know, is alive and the person who did that is in jail, you know. Well, guys, I am so thankful that you guys requested this video and I'm happy I did a reaction to it. It was really interesting. You know, I want to research more about like those kinds of stories. I'm just so nosy, I guess. That's why I like true to life stories. Well, guys, if you like that video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave in the comment section down below what other videos you would like me to react to. The original link of this video will be in the description box down below as well as my social media links. So, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!